Hi there, my name is Belinda Davison and welcome as always to the I Ching Cafe for our weekly overview for the week commencing the 23rd of March 2020. Well, last week felt like the longest week ever. We're always having weeks that go fly by. <laughs> oh no, I don't hard well for you, but every day there was so much going on. Our world is in a weird place. We are all in a weird place. So it's really great for me to have this opportunity to share with you some tools that we can use to navigate through this very choppy sea of change that we are all being thrown into. Isn't it wonderful? We're in it together. Together we are stronger. Such a powerful theme. So last week in our weekly overview, we had Hexagram 33 Retreat Locked. And I spoke about the ultimate self-isolation hexagram, withdrawing from the world, going into the cave and hiding out. So that was our key focus, locked, no change. This is what we have to do. That's what we are asked to pay attention to. And for you, that might have been literally physically isolating. Hopefully you have been or going through a process of isolating yourself from negativity and becoming aware of these worldly events and how do we relate to them? How do we as countries you see country after country isolating itself, going into major retreat as a way to slow down and flatten the curve. So this week, let's get into this hexagram. For this week, there are some changing lines, but I'd like you to think about what would be the creepiest, weirdest hexagram to get for the first hexagram. Just think for a moment. Think back to last week. What would be the weirdest possible hexagram for us to get at the start of this week, the 23rd of March. You're right, hexagram 33, retreat. I literally, my eyes bulged and I went, what? <laughs> and I cast the coins and there it was, retreat, our first hexagram for this week. Now, I would encourage you, if you haven't yet gone to last week's overview, I'm not going to get into the details of retreat or all the things that I said last week about self-isolating our minds and physically and getting rid of negativity and withdrawing from the battlefield. You can go and replay last week's episode when we talk 100% about 33 retreat. What I am going to draw your attention to is an incredible thing that has happened this week with our weekly overview. There's not one line, there's not two lines, there's not three lines, there's not four lines, which you've had before. There are five changing lines. Okay, we have never had this on this channel. And if you cast five or six changing lines in your own consultation, it is a rarity to have so much change, so much movement in a particular question. And that's what we have for this week. We have five out of the six changing lines. One, two, three, four, and five. The only one that's not changing is line six. So what do we do with this? So there are some schools of thought that say when there is four or more changing lines, in a way we are so rapidly moving to the outcome and to a new state that the changing lines become meaningless. And I have mentioned to you this before, this thought around four or more. With five changing lines being online, a rarity, a rare, incredible point of change this week brings, like <sighs> compression. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that thinking. I'm going to give you what all the five lines mean, but bearing in mind that literally every single day a new line is clicking in, you can start to imagine the flow of change that's happening for us. It's bang, 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 five changing lines every day. A new stage of change is kicking in. This is a huge week. Okay, so I would say in the light of everything else that's going for you, your business, your team, your family, this is a, a crunch moment of flows of change. And what we're not doing is we're not putting a whole lot of negative wrappers around change because this whole point of the I Ching is to learn to build a relationship with change and to learn to flow with change. So we're not going to criticize change, we're just going to embrace what has come to teach us. So our changing lines, I'm going to go rapid fire through the five. Number one, the retreat is not yet possible. We need to plan for the retreat. Plan for the retreat in your businesses this week. Number two, 
Through retreating, we get a new perspective where we see something we've never seen before and that unlocks opportunity. Okay, line number two, look for the opportunity because you have taken a step back. Line three, as much as you're trying to retreat, lots of complexity, lots of tangled webs blocking us in. We need to rally the troops, the helpers to shift through and break through that change. We've had that line before. Line four, retreat leads to love and connection. Maybe you're spending more time with your loved ones. Retreat creates love and connection. Number five, retreat creates excellence. Okay, so you can see there's so much change in this week. It's like a nexus point of change. So what I'd like to do now is take the view that what we're going to concentrate on is all this retreating we need to do. So pay attention to the lines, plan them in. There we go, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> what I'd like to focus on though is the outcome hexagram and the changing line we could read there. So this is how it works. So our hexagram for the outcome, the second state of change, and I would say our primary focus for this week, because of all these changing lines, I would say we're gonna focus on this outcome on the second hexagram as our core theme to focus on. Bearing in mind, if there's still retreat stuff you have to do, do the retreat stuff. Carrying over from last week's retreat locked. So let's get to it. Hexagram number two. <sighs> Hexagram 41, decrease. Okay. So this hexagram is all about making sacrifices, cutting back, reducing your spending, <laughs> getting rid of the unnecessary, clearing out clutter, putting down the emotional entanglements that hold us in position, decrease anything that's excess. So it doesn't take a stretch of the imagination to apply that to our current context, to our businesses, to our personal lives. What do we have to focus on this week? The I Ching is shouting, retreat and decrease. <laughs> cut expenses, cut unnecessary things, cut projects that are no longer necessary. Cut, 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 cut. Cut away the things that are superfluous. And remember, superfluous things can be physical things, it can be emotional things, it can be mental things. Get to the core of what's important. And what is important for us personally in our businesses? The purpose for which we stand. So decrease is all about a lake and the sun shines on the lake and the water evaporates and forms into clouds. So initially we see the level of the water in the lake has dropped, but what has actually happened is the water has now gone into the atmosphere, accumulating into clouds and when the time is right, rains and looks after the crops. What we're being asked to pay attention to is to sacrifice the lower, the riffraff, in favor of the higher, the higher purpose, the higher calling, the bigger purpose that you and your business are here to fulfill. Make the sacrifice now so that you can fulfill that purpose. And of course, I'm saying that in context of all the businesses that are facing trauma of the freelancers and the contractors and People who are uncertain about their jobs and retrenchment, there's a lot going on. What the I Ching is saying is, for each of us, no one is excluded, decrease is what we need to pay attention to. We cannot live and consume at the pace we were doing before. We have to decrease, get back to bare basics of what it is that we really need. Because there's a higher purpose, we can grow and develop because we're cutting away unnecessary energy. Now, a word in point, I know that there have been some horror stories of companies just retrenching masses of their staff immediately. And of course, that has a massive knock-on effect to families and people and children and societies and communities. And we don't know how this is going to pan out. We have to be okay with not knowing. What I would do if you own a business and you are facing this difficult decision of there's no cash coming in, I've got a payroll, I've got to try and work out what do I do, maybe I should just retrench most of my staff. If they're still around when things pick up, I'll just rehire them. So just pay attention to this one thought. Remember when I said that if we have four or more changing lines, that some schools thought, say, we read changing lines in the outcome hexagram, okay? Because there's so much change here, we can't possibly pay attention to it. It's just moving so quickly. And what that school of thought says 
is that you take the line that is unchanging in the question you've asked. So in this case, it's line number six, okay, the top. And you read the changing line of the top line in the outcome hexagram, the second relating hexagram in this case, 41 decrease. So you can see that instead of reading it here, it's the only unchanging one. So we read the advice for the same line in the outcome hexagram. It's almost like doing a switcheroo. And that particular line gives us this advice. That in decreasing what is superfluous, riffraff, <laughs> whatever is the excess that we've been carrying around, whether it's excess we've tolerated because we haven't had difficulty, or it's fundamental survival that you're needing to pay attention to as a business or individually, that by decreasing, by focusing on letting go of all the noise, and focusing on the core of what's really important, what you do is fundamentally bring increase. Okay, so in this opportunity, if we pay attention to what the I Ching is saying, if we decrease, we create increase, but <laughs> because that line is in the sixth position, it is the position of the wise sage that sits beyond the world and looks in. What the wise sage is saying in line six is, as long as that increase does not decrease others. Right, I'm going to leave that with you. That when you think about where you're cutting, what you're doing, how you are engaged in decreasing the unnecessary in your life, that you balance that off. The increase that will come in the future by doing that, you balance that off about not decreasing others. This is not about I get out of the problem and other people get into the problem. So I know there's a lot of stories about businesses just doing that, retrenching their staff or, you know, ending contracts. I've seen one example for someone very close to me where there are contract workers and on a day they're told, you don't come back to work and when we resume work, we'll carry on paying you because that's how we work. That is not leadership. That is being increased at the detriment of someone else's decrease. And if you do that, the cycle switches in reverse and the elastic band will bang, will really kick you in the butt on the return swing. So as long as the benefit that comes to you through the decrease does not decrease others, and do so at your peril. Right, so what an amazing time to be alive. What an amazing time to be here with you doing this amazing work with the I Ching and I'm so grateful for this opportunity that you're here with me Stay in the process, stay in the flow of change. None of us have any idea how this is going to pan out. So all we can do is take it week by week, day by day, and remember that we are stronger when we work together. We are increased when we don't decrease others. And in this whole story, something really amazing is emerging for us as a planet. Right, have a wonderful week. And remember to enter into the March giveaway Put in your question, ask the I Ching what it is that you need, and let's see if you're the lucky winner for March. Thank you so much, and see you on the social platforms, wherever you choose, soon. Bye.